Why does Bitcoin have value? I mean, it's not gold that you can hold in your hand. It's not backed by a government. It's literally just numbers on a screen. So why are millions of people around the world treating it like the most important money ever invented? Here's the truth. Everything that's ever had value from seashells to sneakers got that value because people agreed it was worth something. Bitcoin takes that same idea, but supercharges it with technology that makes it scarce, secure, and unstoppable. Stick with me, and by the end of this video, you will understand in plain English exactly what gives Bitcoin value and why it matters to your life. Think about the strangest thing you've ever seen people spend real money on. It could be easy sneakers, Pokemon cards, a rare bottle of wine, or even V-Bucks inside Fortnite. None of these things can feed you or keep you warm at night, but they still sell for crazy amounts of money. Why? Because value is never an absolute thing. Value is subjective. That's a fancy way of saying something is worth whatever someone else is willing to pay for it. Let's test this. If I offer you a bottle of water in the middle of a grocery store, you might say it's worth $2. But if I offer you that same bottle of water after you've been lost in the desert for two days, suddenly it's priceless. The water didn't change, your situation did. That's value in action. Now, sometimes value comes from intrinsic utility, meaning the thing itself does something useful. Gold, for example, can be shaped into jewelry or used in electronics, oil can fuel cars, we can feed people. But other times, value comes from Basically, we all just agree something is worth it, like football cards, beanie babies, and sneakers. They're valuable not because of what they do, but because of what we believe. So here's the big question. Is Bitcoin just another collectible, valuable only because people believe in it? Or does it have lasting, real utility that gives it a foundation like gold or oil? To answer that, let's zoom out and look at how humans have decided what money is throughout history. If this is finally making sense, hit subscribe right now so you don't miss the rest of this series. Let's keep going. Money isn't one of humanity's oldest inventions, but it didn't start as coins or paper. Long before dollars and banks, people traded directly. That's called barter. You've got chickens, I've got apples. If you want apples and I want eggs, great, we trade. But what if I don't want chicken today? That's called the coincidence of wants problem. Barter breaks down when people don't perfectly want what the other has. So humans started using objects as money. We pick things that most people would accept. Seashells, beads, salt, even large stones. In some parts of Africa, salt was so important it literally became currency. That's where we get the word salary from the Latin word salarium, meaning salt money. Eventually, certain things won out, gold and silver. Why? They had the best mix of qualities people needed for money. They were scarce, so you couldn't just make more. They were durable, gold doesn't rust or rot. They were divisible, so you could melt them down into coins or different sizes. And they were portable, easier to carry than cows or sacks of salt. For centuries, gold and silver were money, but then government stepped in. Carrying gold everywhere was risky and heavy, so banks issued paper notes that represented gold. If you held a dollar, you could redeem it for real gold at the bank. And over time, governments cut that link. They printed more paper than they had gold to back it up. Eventually, they abandoned the gold standard completely. And now, our money is what we call fiat currency. And fiat just means by decree, the government declares, this is money and we all agree to use it. Here's the thing, fiat money works only as long as people trust it, but governments can and do create more of it whenever they want. That's why the US dollar has lost significant purchasing power over the past century. So the lesson from history is this, money evolves. It isn't tied to one object forever. Seashells worked until they didn't. Gold worked until governments replaced it. Fiat money works now, but it has serious cracks. That sets the stage for Bitcoin. Because when Satoshi Nakamoto invented Bitcoin in 2009, they weren't making up some random internet coin. They were building on thousands of years of money history and creating a version design for the digital age. Now that we've seen how money has evolved, let's talk about the problems with the money we use today. The first big problem is inflation. Inflation means your money slowly loses purchasing power over time. $100 in the year 2000 bought a lot more groceries than it does today. Why? Because governments and central banks can print new money whenever they want. And every time they add more money into the system, the money you already hold becomes worth less. It's like watering down soup. The more water you add, the less 
flavor it has. The second problem is trust. Today, all digital money, whether it's the balance in your bank account or PayPal transfer, depends on centralized systems. If you swipe your credit card, your bank has to approve it. If the bank shuts down, freezes your account, or simply makes a mistake, you lose access. And if governments decide they don't like a certain person or group, they could block transactions entirely. Before Bitcoin, no form of digital money could exist without this middleman. The reason is something called the double spend problem. Imagine you send someone a digital file, like a photo. You still have the original, and now they have a copy. That's fine for photos, but not for money. With digital money, there has to be a way to make sure the same dollar can't be copied and spent twice. Banks solved that problem by being the referee, but that means they hold all the power. In 2008, Satoshi Nakamoto figured out a way to solve this without banks. They combined cryptography, peer-to-peer -peer networking, and incentives to create a system where the ledger is shared by thousands of computers around the world. And that's the blockchain. It ensures no one can double spend, no one can fake a transaction, and no single person or government controls the system. So Bitcoin wasn't invented to gamble or get rich quick. It was invented as a solution to give people money that is resistant to inflation, can't be shut down, and that doesn't depend on trusting banks or governments. One of the most powerful features of Bitcoin is its scarcity. In fact, this might be the single biggest reason it has value. Dollars have no fixed limit. If the government wants to print an extra trillion dollars, they can. When more dollars flood into the system, the dollars already in your wallet lose purchasing power. Gold is scarce because you can't just make more of it. But gold still has a problem. The supply is always growing. Miners add about 1-2% to more gold to the global supply every year. And Bitcoin solves this with something radical, a hard cap. There will ever only be 21 million Bitcoins, period. And no one, not Satoshi, not the miners, not the governments, can change that number. On top of that, Bitcoin's new supply gets cut in half every four years in an event called the halving. When Bitcoin first launched in 2009, Miners receive 50 new Bitcoins every 10 minutes. And today, after the most recent halving in 2024, they receive just 3.125 Bitcoin. And in a few years, it will drop again. This halving process will continue until around the year 2140, when the very last fraction of Bitcoin is mined. Think about what that means. Imagine if the gold supply was cut in half every four years. What would happen to the price? It would likely skyrocket. This fixed supply is complete break from the money we know today. Every dollar in existence depends on the decisions of people in power. Bitcoin depends on unchangeable code. The scarcity is what makes people call Bitcoin digital gold. But the truth, it's even scarcer than gold. And unlike gold, it's infinitely easier to move, to divide, and to verify. So when people ask, why is Bitcoin valuable? This is the first and clearest answer, because it's absolutely scarce. There will never be more than 21 million, and the world has never seen money like that before. If you're learning something new here, drop the word sats in the comments so I know you made it this far. To really understand why Bitcoin has value, let's step back and ask, what makes any money good? Economists have studied this for centuries, and they usually point to a set of qualities that all successful money shares. Let's walk through them one by one and see how Bitcoin stacks up. One, scarcity. We already talked about this. Money needs to be limited, otherwise it loses value. Seashells failed as money in some places because eventually people could just collect too many of them. And Bitcoin fixes this with a hard cap of 21 million. That's absolute scarcity. Number two, durability. Good money can't rot, rust, or fall apart. Gold doesn't decay. A dollar bill lasts maybe a few years before it's torn or replaced. But Bitcoin, it's digital. As long as the internet exists, your Bitcoin exists. It can't wear out. Number three, portability. You need to be able to carry money around and move it easily. Try carrying $1 million in gold bars through an airport. Not fun. With Bitcoin, you can send millions across the world in minutes. Number four, divisibility. Money needs to be broken down into smaller pieces for everyday use. You don't buy coffee with a whole gold bar. A dollar can be divided into 100 cents. Bitcoin takes this further. Each Bitcoin can be divided into 100 million smaller units. That means you don't need to buy a whole Bitcoin. You can own $5 worth or even less. Number five, recognizability. People need to be able to verify that money is real, not fake. In the old days, merchants would buy coins to check they were real gold. And today,
today, dollars have holograms and watermarks. Bitcoin takes this to another level. Every transaction is verified by thousands of computers worldwide. You don't need to trust anyone. You can check it yourself with software. Number six, security. Good money should be hard to counterfeit or steal. Counterfeiting dollars is illegal, but it's still possible. Gold bars can be faked with tungsten cores, but Bitcoin? The blockchain makes it nearly impossible to counterfeit. And when stored properly, using wallets and private keys, it's one of the most secure forms of wealth ever created. Bitcoin doesn't just match the qualities of money. It outperforms every version of money we've ever had. And for the first time in history, we have a form of money that checks every single box perfectly. And that's why people call it sound money for the digital age. Up to this point, we've seen why Bitcoin is designed to be incredible money. But here's one thing. Even if it's perfect on paper, it only has value if people actually believe in it and use it. This is where the network effect comes in. The network effect is simple. The more people who use something, the more valuable it becomes. Think about telephones. The very first telephone wasn't useful. Who would you call if you're the only person with one? But as more people got phones, the usefulness grew, and eventually phones became essential. The internet works the same way. In the early days, it was clunky and limited, but as more people connected, shared information, built websites, and created services, the value of the internet exploded. Social media is another example. Facebook wasn't valuable when it was just a few college kids, but once your friends, family, co-workers, and celebrities joined, suddenly it became the place to be. Bitcoin grows in the same way. The more people who hold it, the more secure the network becomes. The more liquid the markets get, and the more businesses are willing to accept it. Each new person doesn't just add to Bitcoin, they multiply its power. And here's the kicker. Bitcoin belief isn't blind faith. It's reinforced every day by the system working exactly as designed. Every 10 minutes, new blocks are mined. Every transaction gets verified. Every halving cycle reduces supply. And with each year that passes, more people trust it because they can see the track record. So when people say Bitcoin only has value because people believe in it, they're partially right. But that's true of all money. The US dollar has value because people believe it does. Gold has value because people believe it does. The difference is that Bitcoin couples that belief with unbreakable math and technology. That combination, belief plus network effect, is what turns Bitcoin from the niche experiment to a global financial force. Now, let's deal with the elephant in the room, the criticisms. If you've talked to anyone about Bitcoin, you've probably heard at least one of these. So let's break them down. Bitcoin is just speculation. Yes, people speculate on Bitcoin, but let's be clear. Speculation happens with every asset that's new and growing. In the early days, people speculated on oil, railroads, the internet, even the automobile. Just because people speculate doesn't mean the thing itself has no value. It just means that the market is still figuring out what that value is. Bitcoin is backed by nothing. Sounds scary, right? But ask yourself, what backs the dollar? It used to be gold, but not anymore. Today, it's just government decree and the belief that others will accept it. Bitcoin is backed by something stronger, math, code and a decentralized network that no single person controls. That backing might be invisible, but it's far more predictable than politics. It's too volatile to be money. That's true for now. Bitcoin's price goes up and down a lot, but volatility is a natural stage of adoption. Think of the early internet stocks in the 1990s. They swung wildly too. And over time, as Bitcoin's market grows and matures, the volatility decreases. So here's the bottom line. Most criticisms are either misunderstandings or short-term issues. None of them erase the core fact. Bitcoin is the first money in history that is scarce, secure, portable, divisible, durable, and decentralized. And that's why, despite all the noise, adoption keeps growing. So, after everything we've covered, let's bring it to the present. Why does Bitcoin have value today? And where could it be headed in the future? First, Bitcoin is already being used as a store of value. In countries with unstable money, like Venezuela, Argentina, or Turkey, Bitcoin isn't a speculation game, it's survival. Second, adoption is spreading globally. El Salvador made Bitcoin legal tender in 2021. Large companies from Tesla to Square to MicroStrategy have added Bitcoin to their balance sheets. And everyday people, from retail investors to retirees, are including Bitcoin in their portfolios. Bitcoin's fixed supply means that as demand grows, so so does its price. Unlike dollars or gold, where new supply dilutes value, Bitcoin supply is capped forever. 
now. What about the future? Many see Bitcoin as becoming the digital gold of the internet age. Gold has a market cap of around $13 trillion dollars today, and Bitcoin is sitting at about $1 trillion. Dollars. Bitcoin simply matches gold's role as a global store of value. That alone would be many times more growth from here. But it could go even further. Some envision Bitcoin becoming a global reserve asset. The neutral money countries use to trade with each other when they don't trust each other's currencies. Others see it as a foundation for new financial systems built on top of it, the way the internet became the foundation for apps and platforms we couldn't imagine in the 90s. Will there be challenges? Absolutely. Regulation, volatility, and education. Those are all real hurdles. But the direction of travel is clear. Every year, Bitcoin becomes more secure, more adopted, and more proven. So when people ask, why does Bitcoin have value? The most honest answer is because it solves problems that matter right now, and it holds the potential to reshape how the world understands money in the future. If you're serious about understanding Bitcoin's role in your future, make sure you stay with me through the very end. I've got one final takeaway you won't want to miss. We've covered a lot in this video. We started by asking, what gives Bitcoin value? And we saw that value itself comes from three things belief, utility, and scarcity. And through history, money has evolved from shells, to gold, to paper, to the digital dollars we use today. Each version solved problems, but each had flaws. Inflation, central control, and a lack of scarcity all weakened the money that we rely on. Bitcoin was invented to solve those problems with its fixed supply, unmatched durability, divisibility down to tiny sats, borderless portability, and unstoppable security, it checks every single box of what makes good money. And thanks to the network effect, every new person who joins makes Bitcoin stronger, more trusted, and more valuable. Sure, there are criticisms, but none of them erase the simple truth. For the first time in history, we have money that is truly scarce, decentralized, and built for the digital age. And that's why millions of people worldwide treat it like digital gold. So here's my challenge to you. Don't just stop here. Keep learning. Explore how Bitcoin works. Try holding a little yourself. Because understanding Bitcoin isn't just about understanding technology. It's about understanding the future of money. And the sooner you start, the sooner you'll see why Bitcoin's value isn't just in the price. It's in freedom, security, and opportunity it gives to anyone willing to understand.